Welcome back to Barstools and Band Talk. We are with Buck and Brian from Barstools Confession. Oh, great. How'd you guys come up with the name? Um, because when we came up with Barstools and Band Talk, um, we agonized over it. I had a radio show that was called Front and Center. It was about minor sports. And it was shut down, so we were just kind of doing this internet thing. And we agonized over the name. We came up with Barstools and Band Talk. How'd you guys come up with, with the name for your band? Well, I wish I had it, but we had a band when we started as our garage band. Um, I guess I'm a bit scruffy, so uh, I, <laughs> I hated the I name. Loved it. I loved it. I loved all the paraphernalia yeah. we had because I wasn't we, in the band. We had some great paraphernalia, but it was called Scruffy Buck and the Bad Dads was the original <laughs> band name. And I thought, like, wow. love it. I love it. That yeah. sounds like a perfect bar. Right and I, there, I just didn't, and uh, even a bad dads, but I just, yeah. I didn't like it in the end when we started playing gigs. It's fun as a, a garage band, having fun here in our, our space. But when we started playing gigs, um, I just felt it wasn't professional if we started to get where we are now, where we're doing an EP and putting music out on the radio and stuff. And um, I just thought, and I've never liked bands that were like, and no offense to the bands of when I say names, but like Barney Bento and the Legendary Hearts. I mean, there's more than Buck in the band. And I just don't like, I didn't like that my name was in there. And I didn't like that it was, it was funny and it was fun, but it was time to change it. So actually Paul Jr., who is our lead guitarist and Biscuit, they came up with Barstool Confession. We threw a number of names around. I just said, you guys figure it out and let me know. They came up with Barstool Confession. Two challenges for us when we did it, though, we loved it, was number one, everybody that knew Barstool Profits said, uh, or they was like, hey, are you, you know, you, are you like the Barstool Profits? So that was one thing. And then the other thing was there's a band in our local area called Barstool Academy. So we play the same bar. So sometimes people show up thinking Barstool Academy is playing when we're playing and vice versa. But um, but it, it's just a name that we liked and it represents what we do. Like, hey, we we just like to get together and play music and have a couple beers and go to bars and play music. And you know what? The thing is for us, we're friends. Like we love being together. I can we we rehearse every Wednesday night here. And it's, I can't wait till Wednesday nights. I count down Wednesday nights like it, I'm a little kid waiting for Christmas morning. So that's the important part of all this is that the name was cool, but it's about it us a, being it friends. Is, it is a cool name. Like you, you get the picture of the bar stool confession, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, you get that picture of the person at the bar sitting on the bar stool and, you know, telling the life story to either another person or to the, the bartender, right? Yeah. It's, it's the confession. Uh, you know what? It's a great point because our whole thing was we're stuck with it now. Well, and it's great because our whole thing was we're sitting at a bar and we're just chatting just like we're doing here. And, you know, no preconceived notion. It's just throw something out and hopefully it sticks. Uh, just before we go on the EP, I want you guys to give our viewers kind of a sense of. So when I used to play in Ontario, we play around Toronto. We do all our original stuff. But then we used to do what we used to call the OHL circuit. We go to Peterborough, Oshawa, Timmins. We uh, yeah. parade, and, you know, we, <laughs> you know what I'm talking also. about, right? Blind yeah. River, uh, Huntsville, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah. What's the scene like up there now? Because I remember uh, I've got some friends that live up there, and they're saying it's not what it used to be. Um, give give our, our folks a sense of what the scene's up like up there right now. Well, I, I, I mean, we haven't played north of, of Barry. We played predominantly Barry now, and I think it's only going to be tougher coming out of, of COVID because um, everybody's been in shutdown and everybody's created a band or or uh, started to write music. And uh, one of our one of the places that we play is a um, we played there last summer. They want us to play this summer is a uh, big marina, and it's kind of nice because everybody that's there is holiday and a boating comes in and they can bring out lawn chairs. And like I texted her the other day and she said, I'm just being inundated by bands wanting to uh, get involved. Our, our lead guitarist right. arrived. It's not uncommon for them to arrive late. Everybody's hungry. I'm just saying. Everybody's it's, hungry. It's to not uncommon. Yeah, right. it's, it's party it time. time. <laughs> but that's, that, that, yeah. that is the big thing. Yeah. So everybody's it, hunt, hungry to get out there and gig now. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's, I mean, playing live, like when you look at like, we were discussing earlier like when you look at your residuals you're going to get from spotify and that like and it's like the music industry's changed that all of a sudden it's sort of swung back now that the only way you're going to make any money is from your live performances yeah. right like the gate so to mm -hmm. speak but bars at the same time they've all been hurting yeah. so i mean it's not like 
not in the old days where you might get a thousand or two thousand bucks for a stretch. If you can come out of there with three hundred bucks or four hundred bucks and a meal yeah. and maybe a couple of beers, well, hey, count yourself lucky. I mean, I'll be happy. I'm just, I, I'm just happy with beer. I mean, we're I'm, I'll play for beer because we're a little <laughs> older and we have, we're, we're more established in our, our things. I mean, we have the toys now. I mean, production wise, I mean, we're we can we can go from a small club room right up to a well a very large production outside of your house yeah um without having to deal with the extra cost of uh rent get our drummer has um he has connections in the music world and some people that are agents and booking agents so that's how we got in with the rock pile and opening for Learen. and paul has some great contacts in the music industry so you know i think it's like anything though like if you look at hockey let's take the stanley cup playoffs uh you know, Suzuki and, and um, Caldwell? Caldwell, Caldwell, yeah, great hockey players, Caulfield, great hockey players. But I can tell you, there's better hockey players somewhere in the world that nobody knows about. So yep. there is, I think music's a bit like that. I mean, I, I can tell you there's hundreds of thousands of bands way better than us, but we just sometimes our foot is in the right place at the right time. And, yeah. and uh, but I think the scene, it's hard to really give you a good answer on what the scene's like right now because it's been down for 15 months, so. And everybody's gonna be coming well, out of the gate hungry. Yeah. Just like well, you said, you gotta be at the level. I remember too, and, and I mean, I grew up in Dartmouth, which is really Halifax. And I was never concerned about being the best guy in my backyard. I was worried about what guys like you were doing in Ontario and guys that were doing in BC. So that was kind of where I was always focused. And I want to be, you know, better than them, not better than, you know, some guy that I knew up the street. Um, but what I remember about the scene when I was up there and when I was here in Halifax, we got together the same week that Sloan got together. So you can imagine, you know, we're an Aerosmith extreme type band. Didn't go so well for us. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but one of the things I do remember about the scene, like I used to play the gas works a lot. Um, yeah. And I think it's like last time I was in Toronto, it's like a bakery or something now, but I just remember being able to go out to any bar and seeing super talented musicians and going like, Holy smokes, I have to really make sure that I'm staying on top of my game. or I'm going to get buried here. Um, and yeah, I, I'm I think we're a bit like this. I think we're still, I think we're like that. We go see other bands and we know that we have to, we can't expect to get gigs if we're going to, you know, screw up chords and mess up lyrics and not get focused. And hey, I mean, it's like hockey players or basketball players or anybody in any industry, you have bad nights. Um, but not we really, but, yeah, but we who, try to- Who has a bad night? <laughs> I, I definitely have a bad <laughs> night the odd time. I mean, for me, the biggest problem as a vocalist and a guitar and everything is I, I have to remember lyrics and and that and saying and play guitar and these guys have said you don't have to play guitar but i'm not a dancer so i need to do something when they're doing something so sure um yeah but it is i, I think you're right i mean we have to um you know we want to keep playing bigger shows paul was able to get us uh last summer no uh, last time, the summer before, we got to play Campin' Fest, which is a big festival here, and we got to be one of the openers, early openers for Loverboy. So those type of things are are just good. They're just fun when we can get our foot in the door and get on a big stage. I don't care if there's 20 people, because you're going to play the same for 20 people or 20,000 people. And if you don't, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. Great the point. Overall, the, mm. the, the overall search for tone. I mean, every time we gig, the whole thing is we want it to sound fantastic. And we're always striving for the tone, live, jamming, gig, small bar, big bar. And like, he's a little tone heavy. I'm a little OCD when it comes to it, but I mean, it's the search for tone. Like, and, it's, and like I say, with most of our originals, you know, we're search for tone. It's like tonight and like we, you know, we've written them and we've produced them on the recording and none of the production is really too far out that we can't recreate that in a live situation. Well, we don't need to go hire three more people to come in. And all the arrangements are pretty well close enough with, we just ought to keep working on our own practicing when it comes to the production level on a live thing, but keep, it'll sound like the album. And that's the whole idea with a whole bunch of tunes. By the way, this is Paul Jr. He's our hey. lead guitarist. And uh, Paul was the one who named it, came up with the name. So when you asked me about the name, Paul and, and Biscuit did so. I didn't like well, Scruffy Buck in his idea. I, I like it. So we're going to take another break. We're going to pay some bills. We're going to come back. And I said we were going to get into the EP, but we will get into the EP on the next segment. And we're back Sounds after good. this.